Revelation chapter 12. You ever wondered how there could actually be war in heaven? This is the place that God actually is. And yet the Bible tells us that there was war in heaven. That Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and his angels. Now who's Michael and his angels in this battle? Jesus. And the angels that are with Michael, who are they? Are they good angels or are they bad angels? They're the good angels, right? Who's the dragon and who's his angels? You ever wondered how there could actually be war in heaven? Think about heaven. Heaven is a place we all look forward to going to, right? It's perfect. There's no pain. There's no suffering. Nothing bad ever happens there. And yet, at some time in history, there was actually civil war in heaven. And it got so bad that the dragon and those that followed him were cast out of heaven. Now, we went through this last week. When God created Lucifer, did he create him perfect? Yep. Right? Ezekiel tells us that, and I believe it's Ezekiel 28, tells us that he was created perfect in all his ways until iniquity was found in him. God didn't create him as a sinful being. He became a sinful being. Do you know how that happened? Separation from God. Say it loud, Ricky. Separated himself from God. He separated himself from God because he was created to be a selfless being, to look out for the benefit of others, and he became selfish. And his thoughts and his desires turned inward instead of a loving desire that expresses itself outward. So turn to Revelation chapter 12. Let's look at these verses now. Do you know how many angels God created in the beginning? A whole bunch. A whole bunch. I like that answer. Turn to Revelation chapter... Hmm, I think it's going to be... Let me find it here. You know, John. Go ahead, Ricky. The uh, spirit of prophecy tells us that Jesus doesn't, he wasn't given uh, more than what we, what we're given. And uh, it, at the tomb when Jesus died and he was raised, how many angels were there? There were two. Mm -hmm. And that's where that, uh, that saying comes from, how many angels do we have? Guardian angels too? Yeah, just think about how many people are on the planet. So, Revelation chapter 12, verse 4, says that his tail, that is this great fiery red dragon from verse 3, his tail drew how many? Third. Now, Revelation, is there a lot of symbolism in this book? Yes. And this verse is symbolic as well. So this dragon drew a third of the stars of heaven. What does that mean? means that he was able to draw a third of all the angels with him. Now, how many is that? Well, listen. If the ones, if he drew a third, how many is left? So two-thirds, Daniel saw them in vision. And Daniel saw 10,000 times 10,000, thousands and thousands, ministering around the throne of God. How many is that? That's what Ricky said. It's a whole lot. Right? So, those were the angels that stayed loyal, the two-thirds. So if you add the one-third, God created a lot of angels. Is that right? So listen, what I want you to see is that this war that broke out in heaven, one-third of these angels that gave their allegiance to Lucifer, they were cast out. And where were they cast to? There is a spiritual battle that you fight every day. There are spiritual forces that go unnoticed and unseen, but they are here, and they do not sleep, and they will not relent. Amen. And this battle is real, and it's true, and you have to be prepared to fight it every day. 
So let's continue to look in Revelation. His tail, this is verse 4, his tail threw, uh, drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born. Who was this woman's child? Verse 5, she bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up to God in his throne. So who was the child? Jesus. The child is Jesus. Very easy to see. What I want you to see and understand is this battle. This battle is between the dragon and this child. So it's a battle between the dragon and Jesus. This is why as Seventh-day Adventists we talk about the great controversy. This is why there's a book that's written called The Great Controversy between Christ and Satan. And this battle, this battle is for your mind, every day is being played out of who you give your allegiance to every day. Whether it's to Christ, and if you're not Christ, there's nothing in the middle. You're either Christ or you're Satan's. There is no middle ground. This is why, as I told the children, today is the day of salvation. Today, right now, is what you have. You're not promised tomorrow. So if you haven't given your heart to Christ, now is the time. So as we continue to read on in Revelation, we find out that, verse 7, war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. Michael is also found in the book of Daniel. And in the book of Daniel, Michael is called Michael, your great prince, who stands for his people. So there's many ideas who Michael is. Michael is a type of Christ. What you're going to find is Michael in this battle. And you also find in Daniel that Gabriel, you familiar with him? Who's Gabriel? An angel. Gabriel is an angel. Wasn't it Gabriel who was sent down to tell Mary that she would have a child? Gabriel's God's messenger. Now, what was Lucifer's position before he fell? He was the covering cherub. He was God's messenger. That God would give him special instruction and he would give it to the angels. When he fell, who do you think took his place? Does that make sense to you guys? Okay, so... In the book of Daniel, you find that Gabriel was held up from going to Daniel and explaining to him this vision that he had. And he was held up by the prince of Persia. The prince of Persia was under the control of this great red dragon. So this was, again, a battle between human forces and spiritual forces. The dragon had his side, which was the prince of Persia. God has his side, and he sent Gabriel down there. Gabriel was supposed to go to Daniel, but he was held up until who came and stepped in? Michael. This is why I would tell you that Michael is another name for Jesus. The book of, or the name Michael, what's the last two letters in that name? E-L. E-L. You go back to when Abraham was going to offer Isaac, and Isaac asked him, where we have the fire, we have the wood, but where's the sacrifice? What was Abraham's response? The Lord, Lord himself. Provide. What was the name of the Lord there? El what? And they have many words for the Lord, and each one starts with that word E-L. Because that is one of the names of God. El Shaddai, there's a bunch of them. But this word Michael, go home, figure out from your concordance, what that word Michael means. So, this is why this wasn't just another angel. It says, Michael fought against the dragon. Who prevailed? If another angel could have done the bidding, that angel could have came down and saved you. Right? Who was it that, yes? I think I remember that Michael means he who is my God. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I want you to understand this. When it says that Michael fought, 
Jesus wasn't just being a general sitting back and saying, okay, I want you to go here and fight this guy. This was a battle between Christ and Satan. And that it took God himself to kick these angels out of heaven. Now listen. Could you really actually ever think that you could actually win a battle against God? I've asked this before. Is Satan smarter than we are? Yeah. Yes. Why would he go this route and really think he could prevail? And I told you the answer to that is because he knew something about God and God's character that we don't. He stood right at God's throne. He was the covering cherub. He understood the depth of God's love. He also understood that God was merciful and God was patient. And that God would not act right away. Could God blot him out? Right? Why did he not do that? Would have made our lives easier, wouldn't it? But there was a reason and he had a plan. Yes? He was deluded by pride. Lucifer was? Yes. This angel, who was created above all the other angels, again, you find that in Ezekiel, looked and became jealous because he wanted to be worshipped. You find that in the book of Isaiah. He said, I will set my throne above the throne of God. Yeah. Yeah. And he really thought he could do it. How? Because he didn't want, he knew that he couldn't be like God, as in he could speak and create things. This is about worship. That if he could get other created beings to worship him, that he would be like God. Right? What is the first commandment? Was Lucifer under that same command? So if they worshipped him, he would be like God. Does that make sense to you guys? Hence, he broke that commandment. And he broke every other one after that. Okay? So, this is why he proceeded with this battle. Because he was banking that God would not destroy him. Because if he could turn the minds of these angels to him, and create a doubt, and that's all he needed was just to create a doubt. Then God would have to do something to show the truth between what Satan was saying and what God was really like. So you find this battle in heaven. Michael and his angels fought. Dragon and his angels fought. The dragon did not prevail, verse 8. Nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. Why? Why couldn't they stay in heaven? Did Lucifer sin? Yes. Turned his back on God. That's what you said, right? Did the angels that followed him sin? What happens to sin when it stands in the presence of a holy God? It is consumed, right? God could have consumed him. And it was God's plan not to. And you need to understand why. Because this is very important as you go <laughs> and live your day-to-day -day life in a world where you're wondering where God is with all this evil and pain. Okay? So, for whatever reason God had, He decided not to destroy Lucifer and his followers. But He had a great idea. Let's cast them down to this earth. Okay? And uh, all the people that live on this earth, they can have it. How well did that work for us? Okay, so listen. Here's the question. Did he cast them down here to this earth before he made Adam and Eve? No. After he made Adam, Adam and Eve? Have you ever thought of the chronology of all this? When did this actually take place? I don't know. So I'm not going to tell you. I can just give you a good guess. You know that Adam and Eve were here on this earth. It was created. God said in Genesis chapter 1 that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, right? Amen. 
some point, war broke out in heaven. They had no more room for them up there, so they cast them down here, so the earth was already made. Is that right? Okay. Now, when God created Adam and Eve, did He create them sinless? Yes. Did they have the propensity? You know what that word propensity means? Did they have the propensity to sin? No. No. He created them just like He created Lucifer and all the angels. They were created perfect without a bent or a drive to sin. God was going to give them a test because He made them free moral agents. He created them with the freedom to choose. Is that right? Yes. So, what was the test? You go back to Genesis chapter 1, 2, and 3, you find out that God said, listen, all of the trees of the garden you can use for your food, except the one that's in the midst of the garden. And that's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That tree you shall not touch nor eat, for in the day that you do, you shall what? Surely, Surely die. There's the test. The test of obedience. Because this is what happens with people who are free to choose. Is that right? God could have made us robots, and He could have made us without the power to choose. We could have just done the right thing every time because it would be instinct. But we can never show real love. Right? Love has to be given. How many of you guys ever fell in love with another person who didn't love you back? Right? You know that feeling? And I mean, how much time did you spend thinking about that person? And then you realize, well, they don't love me. And they're not going to love me. Love has to be freely given. Right? And that's how God made us. God wanted us to love Him. Why? Because He's worthy. And God is love. And for Him to get our love, we need to express it to Him freely, willfully. So here's the test. Adam and Eve. Did He give them everything they needed? Yes. Did He provide for them everything they needed? Yes. Nothing they were lacking. God created a garden for them. Do you ever find it strange that the first thing Adam didn't do was build a house? And the first thing Eve didn't do was say, dude, we need a place to live. <laughs> Where's my house? You ever wonder what they lived in? The garden. The garden was their home. How much different are things today? We have a house. We gotta have a house. What's that, sir? We got a cook. Yeah, we got a cook. They didn't have a cook there. So listen, God gave them everything. There was nothing they were lacking. There was no reason for them to disbelieve or disobey. They had everything. So turn with me to Genesis chapter 3. told you about taking the book Patriarchs and Prophets and reading chapter 1. If you've done that, go to chapter 2. This talks about this part of Scripture. Genesis chapter 3. Don't you love it how it starts? Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God has made. And he said to the woman, now, do serpents speak? How can this thing talk? Now, here's, here's something. Do you think that this serpent that she saw was the same snakes that we see and either beat their heads till they're dead or run away from? <laughs> what, do you, what do you do when you see a snake? What's the first thing that comes to your mind when you come upon a snake and it, and it takes you by surprise? Are you really thinking that or are you thinking? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, it does scare me. Yeah. Now, if you came upon a little kitty cat, do you have that same feeling when you first see the kitty cat <coughs> as when you see a snake? No. So, do you think that this snake was the same as the snakes we have today? No. Now, remember that in the end, God cursed this snake and God said, You will crawl upon your belly all the days of your life in dust. 
So what that's telling you is whatever she saw didn't slither across the ground. It was something totally different, right? And it caught her attention. And not only that, but it could speak. Now, from any part of Genesis 1 and 2, did you ever hear any other animal speaking to her? No. And this is why it caught her attention. Because this animal could speak. The servant was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you what? Die. Then the serpent said, You will not surely die. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be what? Like God. Like God. Is that a big G or small G? King James. You will be, which one do you have? King James. And what is, it? is it a big G or a little G? Little G. See? Now, if you have different versions, you're going to have different variations of how they translated this. You will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, now let me ask you a question. Where do you think she was at when she first saw the serpent? Where do you think the serpent was at? Which tree? Right, this is important. The serpent wasn't like over here in the plum tree. Going, look at that tree over there, let's go over there. He was speaking to her from the tree. God said, don't touch it, because the day you touch it, you shall surely die. The serpent was there touching it, and he wasn't dead. Not only wasn't he dead, but he could speak. No other animal could speak. He had come into a higher existence of being. And he promised her, if you eat of this fruit, you too will come into a higher existence of being. You will be like God. Knowing good from evil. How well did that work for her? So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, now don't you think this was going through her mind that God said, listen, don't touch it. Don't eat it. Because the day you touch and eat, you're going to die. Did she ever see death before? No. Did she know what death really was? No. Ricky? No, you said it one too many times, so I'm not trying to say so. Go ahead. Yeah, it really, it, this is all it says. It says, and the Lord commanded the man, saying, well, it says, but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat, you shall surely die. It doesn't say anything about touching. And Eve added that. Yeah. Touching. Mm. Yeah. And that, that was, uh, she's having a word play with the devil. <laughs> and that's the only reason I brought that, that up. She's having a word play with the devil. Is that, is that a good idea? No. 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 Do you ever win? No. no. On those? All right, well, listen, I'm going to tell you, go back to Great Contra, or, uh, Page Rocks and Prophets, Chapter 2. And you find out that what's written in there is that this interplay between Eve and the serpent, she saw that the serpent was in the tree. She saw that the serpent was actually eating the fruit. He touched it and didn't kill it. He ate it and he could speak. And this tweaked her attention. Something had to happen in her mind. Was she created stupid? No. No. How much of her brain could she use? Oh, wow. She was more intelligent than anybody that has walked the earth Amen. since that time. Did God just create her and Adam and then never say anything else to them? No. Do you think they were warned? Yes. Amen. What does it say that God would do in the cool of the evening? He would come visit them, right? So if there was this war in heaven, and if this dragon and all his demons were cast to this earth, and there were multitudes of them and only two humans, don't you think God warned them? Yes. Don't you think the other 
loyal angels warned them as well? You understand that when God made Adam and Eve, they could see him face to face. There was nothing that separated them. Nothing stood between them and God. When God came and walked in the garden, they ran to him and not away from him. Amen. Don't you think there is a lot of conversations about the devil and what would happen to you if you disobeyed? Something had to get her attention. Something had to make her think more about the words of Lucifer than the words of what God said in warning. Is that right? This is why God gave us the gift of the spirit of prophecy. Because, again, this is to get you to think about what the scripture says and to bring you back to the scripture so that you're able to see what actually took place. Do you believe or know that most of the Christian churches today think this is a fairy tale? That it's not real? Where do you come from? If it wasn't Adam and Eve, it came from some type of lower life form. The only two choices you have, yes ma'am? Quick question. Sure. This, uh, something just came to me about the tree. Mm -hmm. Isn't Jesus called the tree alive? Uh, the tr is there any reference in this? The tree could be... Any in scripture, tree? this tree of, of life is a real physical tree. We find that it was taken out of Eden before God flooded the earth. And you find that because, again, in the book of Revelation, the tree of life is back up in heaven now. And that you got the crystal river that runs through the throne room of God. The tree of life is there, and it branches overhangs both sides. In Scripture, is Jesus ever called the tree of life? Yes? There are many names for Christ. Now, it would make sense because where do we get our life from? Jesus. From Christ, right? But listen, there's something special about this tree that as long as Adam and Eve were able to eat of it, they would not die. They would live forever. Now, you need to understand how strong and vital they were at the creation of God. Because after sin, how many years did Adam live? Almost a thousand years. And that was after sin. And all his children's children's children to the time of the flood, they lived for centuries. And that was, they never could partake of the tree of life after that. Okay? After they sinned. And they were still able to live that long. But that's nothing compared to being able to live for eternity. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So in heaven, it tells us and again in Revelation that the tree of life is there. The leaves are for the healing of the nations. Yeah. And the tree will bear a different fruit each month. And you will partake of that and you will continue to live forever. Amen. Yes, ma'am. What would this scripture mean here? Uh, when the woman saw that the tree, the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom. Hmm. You get that? Desirable for gaining wisdom. Now listen, how many of you guys have read the book, the book of uh, Proverbs? You know one of the main themes of the book of Proverbs? Wisdom. Is gaining wisdom. What wisdom... Did she lack that she thought she needed? It was the wisdom to be like God. Right? Because God gave them everything else. Anything she wanted to learn was open to her and Adam. They would never die. They could live forever. If you wanted to study how plants worked, how animals worked, how God created in the atomic level. Was that open for them? Yes. What was the mystery that was closed? The same mystery that was closed to Satan. And that was the very counsel of God. What God thought, how he planned, and what he would do. Satan wanted to be part of that. He said, look how wise, look how beautiful and talented I am. I am just like Christ. I should be in that inner circle. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lucifer wanted Jesus' place. 
That was the God that he wanted to have his throne ascend over. And so the wisdom that he wanted was what he couldn't have. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. If Lucifer was able to attain the wisdom of God, then he would be God. God said, there is nobody above me. There's nobody beside me. I am God. I stand alone. So when Lucifer, who was able to 